What's going on, you guys? It's your Huggable Hipster here, and welcome back to tonight's episode of The Casual Nerd. It's already dark outside. I still feel hype. Like, oh, stretching for coffee. I still feel hype. I still feel like, oh, yes, I can conquer the days if I just woke up. <laughs> so without making the YouTube uh, intro too long, because, you know, algorithms. First up in gaming news, PS5 players will not be getting Bethesda games. I mean, aww. I'm so sorry, my inner just, you know, Xbox only person just came out there for a second NPC. Uh, <laughs> why is it that people, ooh, they underestimate Xbox too much. They're like, they have no exclusives, they have no exclusives. Well, look now. And it says as one of the little subheaders is that it looks like the future of Bethesda titles will be Xbox exclusive. What do you know? So it states in the article that Xbox Phil Spencer has confirmed the future of Bethesda games will be exclusive to, in quote, platforms where Game Pass exists, meaning PS5 players will miss out. During the Bethesda joined Xbox roundtable on March 11th, Spencer addressed speculation around whether the acquisition will see future Bethesda titles, such as Starfield, Elder Scrolls 6, becoming Xbox exclusives. And it's not good news for PS5 players. In quote, if you are an Xbox consumer, the thing I want you to know is that this is about delivering great exclusive games for you that ship on platforms where Game Pass exists. Spencer explained, that's our goal. That's what we're going to do. That's our goal. That's why we're doing this. That's the root of this partnership that we're building. But what does this mean for gamers? Well, it means Bethesda titles will be exclusive to platforms that house Xbox Game Pass, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S, and PC. It's a roundabout way of saying they won't come to PS5 or Nintendo. Nintendo Switch. Um, which I'm very shocked at. I am very shocked at with the move of Sony actually being like, oh yeah, you know what, we're gonna give it a shot. We're gonna put all of our games on PC. Now Xbox comes in and it's like, oh, wait a second, wait a second. You thought we were done? You thought that we weren't going to give, just bite the bait and hold on to it and be like, no, we're going to have exclusives. You thought wrong, sir. Xbox is now coming in being like, this is our time. This is, this is the time where we get to shine and show people that, hey, we can have exclusives too, you know? <laughs> wink, wink. Listen, at the root of it all, I am a PC gamer, okay? I am a PC gamer at heart. The fact of the matter is, is that I hopped onto the Xbox train very late in the game. I would say, no pun intended, I would say 2016 was the first time I actually ever played on any major console, and that was Xbox. So for me, my heart is a Microsoft girl. Always have, always will be, before... Xbox, after Xbox, not to say that I don't like Sony. Sony has come out with some fantastic just, oh, chef's kiss products. Absolutely incredible. But my loyalty lies in Microsoft. So the he who, that's, that was something. That was something, kids, wasn't it? I'm gonna get some people down in the comments below being like, oh, Microsoft, oh. I need you guys to go to customer service with that attitude. Make your complaint over there, not here. This is where we talk about gaming news, not BS. So next up in gaming news, we have some Resident Evil news, which actually the next, uh, well, this one and the next article is going to be Resident Evil related, so strap in, because Netflix's Resident Evil anime series takes Leon and Claire to the White House. Resident Evil 2 remakes voice actors will be reprising their roles, so it'll be really cool to see uh, from the 2019 remake of Resident Evil 2, now those voice actors are going to be in this animated series, which I absolutely love that. I love it so much. It states here in the article that zombies are headed to the White House in Netflix is Resident Evil anime series Infinite Darkness, which honestly, it sounds like a hardcore metal band. It's like, Infinite Darkness. <laughs> I can just picture like some emo kid with hair over their face being like, hey, yeah, dude, what's going on? What band are you listening to there, man? Oh yeah, bro, it's this new band I've been listening to through all my hard times called Infinite Darkness. I picture it. It's, you know, it's totally how I picture it. I mean, you know, I, I listen to a lot of Marilyn Manson and Evanescence in my time, but never Infinite Darkness. Netflix revealed the upcoming series plot on Thursday, releasing new teaser images and announcing the voice cast. Resident Evil Infinite Darkness is set a few years after the events of Resident Evil 4 and will star Leon S. Kennedy and Claire Redfield. Now, Netflix said that the series will bring back voice actors Nick Apostolidis as Leon and Stephanie Pensilio as Claire, the same roles that they played in 2019's Resident Evil 2. 
two we make. But I'm excited about this. I am so excited about this. That's why I'm saving all my energy in reviewing trailers so that I can review the so next up in gaming news, Capcom warns against fake Resident Evil Village early access invitations. Looks like fishing. If you're gonna do nasty things, just stay over there in the corner, eat your damn cheese sticks, and shut up. Stay tuned in the article that Capcom has issued a warning about fake Resident Evil early access invitations. In a note to press, the company said it was made aware of emails in circulation that pretended to contain early access invitations for the hotly anticipated horror game, with the sender address displayed as, as no reply at capcom.com. We want to inform you that these messages are not from Capcom and appear to be phishing attempts by unauthorized third party, Capcom said. If you have received such a message, please do not download any files or reply and delete the message immediately. I haven't gotten any emails like that, but if you guys have, please just delete the emails right away. If it's from Capcom, they're probably going to send it to a bigger creator. Not me. No, but in all seriousness, they're probably going to send it to a really big creator. They're not going to like display it as an email to probably phone call them. That's how legit they are. Next up in gaming news, we have something that's kind of like Animal Crossing and Stardew Valley combined. It is Cozy Grove, and it is Animal Crossing with more story, less capitalism. Developer Spry Fox set out to make a comfortable, inclusive game that adds positivity to the world, which is so wholesome, but what's the catch? There's probably a catch. Everything has to have a catch especially nowadays. So it states here in the article that it's been nearly a year since Animal Crossing New Horizon was first released for the Switch, and while Nintendo's island vacation remains popular, plenty of folks have quietly set their island adventures aside since. Unfortunately, if they were looking for a similar but different experience to follow, there were very few options available. Enter developer Spry Fox with Cozy Grove. Which also, Stardew Valley is kind of like Animal Crossing, so I don't know why they don't mention Stardew Valley, but that's besides the point. Continuing on. A simulation title in the same vein as Animal Crossing that sees players take on the role of Spirit Scout, in order in order of kids in tune with the supernatural world who help soothe restless ghosts. Your scout begins the game by traveling to the tutelier Cozy Grove and is immediately stranded there, along with nearly two dozen spirits who need your help to move on. Cozy Grove, like Animal Crossing, takes, takes place in real time. Each day, many of the spirits you meet will have tasks for you to complete, which which many include familiar activities like fishing, digging, foraging, decorating, and outdoor space or hunting for lost items. New tasks are available each day and returning regularly will gradually unlock more spirits and more of their stories as well as new activities and spaces around their islands. Quotes, I would say big unifying theme is we want to make the world a better place, says Spry Fox CCO Dan Cook in an interview with IGN. We're always trying to bring joy to people's hearts and somehow add something positive to the world world opposed, as opposed to something dark and negative. Which I uh, honestly like, I love this plot line so much. Like the fact that they're taking the spirit world and combining it with Animal Crossings, it makes me want to download this and I might actually do a review on this game. Uh, it's just, I, I don't know, it's just something of where I think that's such a wholesome look to it. Like Animal Crossings and a horror game combined? What? But yeah, I'll have to let you guys know what I think of Cozy Grove because it just, I'm, and I'm not usually about cute. I'm normally about like, yeah, I love that blood and gore. Give me all of that, you know, bursting blood pockets. It's like, yes, please. I would love to get down with the sickness and break some bones. But you know what? Sometimes you want something cute and cuddly instead. And lastly, in gaming news, Genshin Impact made $874 million from microtransactions in the first five months. Genshin Impact is a massive success, and it made more money than Pokemon Go and Roblox on mobile over the most past five months. Whew, I'm so excited. I can't even speak. <laughs> and this is where people... This is where people are going to get irritated because people don't like microtransactions. I have an entirely different opinion on microtransactions. That's good for business and when incorporated correctly, it can actually enhance player activity and player experience. Now it states here in the article that Genshin Impact Mobile Edition is an absolute juggernaut as a sensor tower is reporting that the game brought in around $874 million from its microtransactions since launch at the end of September 2020. Genshin Impact is a success globally, and it ranks third in terms of revenue on iOS and Google Play, only trailing Tencent's Honor of Kings and PUBG Mobile, both of which have made over $1 billion from microtransactions over the past five months. I can't even picture that amount. Like, what do you do with a billion dollars? I know you give it to charity, you do good things with it, but like, I can't even like fathom that amount. 
but I'm really, really happy about that. The fact that they are able to make such a globally amazing experience in terms of a game. Like, yeah, like I said, I love horror. I love being able to have a really immersive experience as far as the story goes and the plot line and, you know, how NPCs interact with one another and how my character interacts with NPCs in the world and everything. And I love immersive experiences, but sometimes you just want a game that you can sit down and chill to. And I love Genshin Impact and I love that, you know, the kind of you know vibe that they have to an extent where you can just sit there you can chill you know you can just play in a cute anime world and i absolutely love it like i love anime style games they're just japanese style games in general i absolutely love i would highly recommend downloading genshin impact because it is a really really fun game i've had so much fun with it i haven't put any of my coin into <laughs> that game yet because i haven't gotten that far i've only like dabbled in it a few times here and there when i can relax but yeah it's really really fun i would totally recommend it you guys that's it for me if you all like my face what I do, please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell down below because I make videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And starting up again, we are going to be having the episodes of Psychologically Gaming coming back. I'm really, really excited about this because I have so many characters to psychoanalyze. So many. But stay casual and nerdy, and I will see you guys in Monday's videos. Bye, guys.